Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Juice in the Morning's Fantasy Football. I guess it's uh, it's live now, man. Like, it's actually the football season. It's happening. It's if you're it. watching this uh, live, uh, we've got less than 24 hours it's until insane. football happens. <clears throat> so, uh, I think there was some breaking news that you wanted to uh, bring up right away. So, yes, thanks for joining uh, Pauly Sleeper's Juice in the Morning podcast. We're going to talk about all fantasy football all season long. Uh, videos dropping on Wednesday nights, uh, so you can listen and, uh, and make your lineups, make your draft kings, uh, make your season long moves. But right now, I want you to pause this podcast and go and see if James Connor is available on your waiver wire in whatever leagues that you're in. And if he is, drop your weakest link and pick him up and because uh, he might be very valuable uh, for your season. It might just be a couple weeks, but it could be an extended period of time. So uh, do that right now and then uh, come back to us. Catch your other people sleeping. Yeah, I caught uh, in six leagues. I picked him up in in two leagues this week. Nice. And and the four leagues that I didn't pick him up in, guys were ahead of the game and had picked him up the last couple of days. I mean, this has been percolating. And I don't know if you saw my tweet today, but I did admit that hey, I dropped a video in June and said, "Don't worry, his value is on the field. He'll play." <laughs> um, and uh, he's ruled out for week one. So I was wrong on that. Come on, Lev Bell, play for us if you have him. <laughs> hey, uh, this week. Is a big week. We've got Joey Bag of Donuts from Twitter getting ready to join us here in a momentarily. Um, we also have tons of, I guess, there's listener league stuff. There's some people talking some shit already. Um, what's going on around the league? We're going to get into that. Um, like I said, DraftKings, the juicy lineup. I put my $100 in this week, guys, so I better be winning some money. The wife told me. She she won't accept failure. No, because no, I told her I was going to put it on the credit card. And she was like, you are not going to put that on the credit card. You're going to take the actual cash out of our bank account so we don't get charged interest on it. And my whole thought was, we're going to win a bunch. I'm just going to pay off the credit card anyways when we're done winning all the money, right? She's probably right, though. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you definitely shouldn't be gambling with uh, with uh, APR interest <laughs> exactly. rates. Because um, there is no guarantees. You know, I've done this for three years, and one out of the three years, I um, did not win money. Right. But uh, I, I won a couple grand last year, so... I trust you in you. Too. I trust in you folks. Um, so what is going around the league, or going on around the league, uh, Polly? You uh, kind of sent me an extensive uh, notes list, which I'm very impressed by yeah we typed out the notes made it official I, I've, I've put some scribbles on here since then but um you know obviously the big news is the Le'Veon bell holdout i called that too uh, i mean i didn't call it but i said what if that happens you did you did <laughs> and 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 it's an interesting topic because you know we have since day one of doing this podcast talked about your theory of the contract year oh yeah and uh does that contract year get more work and and part of what Bell's agent is saying today is we don't want him to be devalued for his next contract due to overuse. Right. He might miss considerable time. It's uh it's it's it's, it's a, shocking. It's kind huge of. right now. He might miss a game or two. I mean, he's definitely out this week. Yeah. That's why I told everybody go, you know, see if James Conner is available. He's definitely out this week. He might be out for several weeks. He might be out for quite some time over half the season. He might get traded. Um, the 49ers would be happy to talk trade right now with Jarek McKinnon out. That's other big news. Um, Let's go Indianapolis Colts. The, though. the Colts, you know, the Colts are the Vegas favorites to have Le'Veon Bell on their team next year. Keep liking all of our Instagram posts. I yeah. heard that on another podcast. Yeah, Keep doing it. I think it all stems from that. Uh, yeah. uh, Bell follows the Colts on Instagram, and I, I don't know if there's any other basis in it, but uh, we do have a ton of cap room. Yeah. So the Texans are are in the mix, too. They only have Lamar Miller, and Deontay Foreman is starting the, the season on the pup. So I would say that if there is a trade, and this is speculation, that it would be the Niners, the Colts, or the Texans. We could do like a big three 2.0 like pay or luck ty and Le'Veon bell that yeah. would be a scary scary offense i think yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it it would be amazing you know wherever he goes they're gonna have to fit him in the scheme or fit the scheme to him because a player like that could easily 
find that it's not working if they don't i mean there's a certain way they block for him right and and it's it's a patient zone blocking scheme where he's usually got the hand on the back of the guy in front of him and he's taking his time and and people that watch his film talk about how patient of a runner he is and other guys that try to replicate it uh if you remember trent richardson yeah um, terrible it doesn't work out so he's gonna have to go to the right place he can't just automatically go to a team and be a superstar right um i'm not saying he's you know, i'm not saying Saying his value is totally linked to their scheme. He's a badass, but it, it, it's just it's a it's a huge trick bag right now. Um, we're going to talk about it m- more later because Joe Toscano, Joey Bag of Donuts, is from Pittsburgh. Yeah, so he's a Yinza. Yeah, yeah. This I don't know what that is. I it's don't a Yinzer. Yinzer. That's 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 like a. Uh, it's kind of a slang term for a, uh, a Pittsburgh. I don't know how to even say it. Like a Pittsburgh person. I don't know what the like so word is. So that's the is. Hoosier of yeah, Pittsburgh. It's is Hoosier. Hoosier. Yeah. Hoosier, okay. Yenzer. Um, they've got a very specific way of talking um, typically. So okay. I'm hoping to hear that from okay. him. Well, <clears throat> I, we're excited to have him and, and the timing couldn't be more perfect. Him being from Pittsburgh. Um, he's got 14,000 fo- followers on Twitter um, and his account is about half football, half just everyday stuff. He right. loves Seinfeld. Um, <clears throat> Me and, too. Yeah. And Big so do you Seinfeld. and so does my buddy josh and my <laughs> brother eric and my nephew aj nice i think i tagged everybody in one of his tweets the other day because he just tweeted out uh, nice game pretty boy <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i followed back and said the magic loogie and, and that was uh, that so anyway That's that was so a great good. seinfeld but um what else is going on around the league the other news is uh jerick mckinnon uh had a non-contact acl injury in practice gotta hate that man i had him in three leagues i think two maybe Oh yeah, that's really tough, man. Guys that had Bell and McKinnon are really scrambling right now. It sucks. Um, I mean, it just shows that the later you can have your draft, the better. Yeah. Um, in my St. Elmo draft, which is my sixth of six drafts on Monday Labor Day, uh, all this had already kind of. I mean, the Bell situation had started um, yeah. to percolate, um, but um, I passed on Bell in that draft with mm. the third overall pick. I oh, took wow. Zeke. Nice. And guys were like, "Oh, I can't believe you're not taking Bell." And I was like, "He's not." anywhere to be seen right now he's right. been seen at strip clubs and beaches yeah <laughs> not making rap music not in pads did he make a rap song he has i don't know if it was recent but he has made a rap song and he's appeared in rap videos i don't know that i'm overly excited Dude, to see we gotta it. we gotta look it up um but james connor has huge value well i mean in in the past when Le'Veon has missed the first few games d'angelo williams took his place and balled out for yeah. four games I, like I, everybody was trying to pick him up off of like wherever he was trade yeah. for him or whatever and then um i think that that's something that could easily happen for the james connor because if they're if they're used to blocking for somebody who's really good but they're still a good run blocking team the backup is gonna do okay like they're not gonna like you know probably ball out like d'angelo williams did but they still have a chance to I don't think you can. I don't think you can count him out completely. He could do better. And D'Angelo's right here in my notes, so I'm so glad you you brought that up. Um, he could do better. D'Angelo, remember, was 30 years old when this yeah. in 2016. Bell uh, missed the first four games, and uh, D'Angelo got heavy work, just like Bell does, and um, averaged 22.4 fantasy points a game, and uh, um, was a complete stud. And that's at 30 years old, and he didn't do anything after that. That was right. at the end of his career. Absolutely. This young man, James Connor is at the beginning of his career. He was drafted by the Steelers last year in the third round. And he's Pittsburgh through and through. Uh, He went to high school in Pittsburgh. He went to University of Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. And now he's a Steeler. So does does he look good too? He's black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Does he look good though? Like the, uh, does he pass the eye test type? Type yeah, runner. he passes the eye test and he can block and he can pass catch. He can do all those things. He's not Le'Veon Bell, right. but D'Angelo Williams proved that, you know, you don't have to be to be successful in that offense. They like him way more now. And I think that's why the, you know, the coach has been kind of like, you know, yeah, fuck you. Right. Because um, they've got faith in, in James Conner and um, he immediately right now, um, while Bell holds out, uh, and or if he gets traded, especially, he's a low end RB one immediately. And when we say RB one, wide receiver two, we talk about a twelve team league as kind of the industry standard. So if I say he's a he's a you know a high end or a low end RB one, I mean that he's going to probably be in the ten to twelve range of running backs, and right. maybe way more. Um, so I might need to uh, pause this and pick him up in my own leagues. <laughs> yeah, I mean you got your laptop out. 
all. You should be looking to see if anybody's falling asleep at the wheel. But McKinnon got hurt, non-contact ACL. Um, so now the the you know Twitter sphere is is arguing over who's got more value, Alfred Morris or Matt Bereda. Um I'm all in on Alfred Morris just because I saw him at the uh, Colts pre preseason game. He looked good. Yeah, he had 12 carries for 84 yards. Yep. So that's what, 7.8 yards per carry? That's And it was good. the Colts D, I guess. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, he's played for uh, Shanahan before in Washington and had some monster 12 and 1,300 yard years. And Shanahan ha- has a history of producing some pretty good running backs, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, he, in the past four years, his running backs are usually in the 6 to 8 range overall in PPR scoring. Yeah. So that's why McKinnon was so highly drafted, just because whoever's in that spot's going to get... Uh, huge volume now now it's looking like maybe a 50 50 or 60 40 40 split Oof. and i'm with you i think it's alfred morris mm-hmm. so if you had to gamble and i've had a lot of questions this week which one should i pick up i say pick up alfred morris he knows the system he's a young 30 years old yeah. because he entered the league at 24 years old right. so he really is a young 30 um, a lot of people said well if he's that good why was he on the couch well i mean the running backs are a dime a dozen you know it's really all about opportunity and opportunity can can really overcome uh, you know talent and, and be more important than talent in this league. So I say Alfred Morris is the guy to pick up there. It's too bad that uh, that Jet uh, is is uh, Jarek McKinnon's nickname. It's too bad that he went down. Right. Um, um, so that's what I'm I'm excited and I hope that uh, Alfred Morris is the guy because I had a buddy that I'm playing against in the week, in week one that I'm starting Alfred Morris against and he said, oh bad choice, buddy. Like talking about the fact that I picked up Alfred Morris because I had Jerick McKinnon and dropped him. Yeah, it's too bad that you have to start him week one. Yeah, really, I is. mean, he's they're playing at Minnesota, so I, I would temper my expectations. But yeah. you got you got to do what you got. That's do. the league I have: Andrew, Aaron Rodgers, Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Brown. Like I have oh, a pretty stacked team. So that's pretty my stacked. running and it's a league that you start three wide receivers, and my third wide receiver that I'm going to start as a flyer is Josh Gordon, even though I know that he's probably not. They're like fully integrated into the team. He's just somebody that I yeah, think Yeah, and he's that, not starting and he's on a snap count, but I still, I wouldn't, could, I wouldn't I think bench that he him. could have three routes run and two touchdowns. Yeah, as a flex, <laughs> and I've gotten that question all week, all, all, uh, all week too. Like, should I, should I bench Josh Gordon? Good God, no. 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 I think there's too good of a chance that he could win your week for you. Right. Now, I mean, if you're in a two wide receiver league, no flex like the St. Elmo League is, and you've got a Golden Tate or a Marvin Jones or an Allen Robinson, then I would mention, but I mean, if you could put them in your flex, go for it. Okay. Um, But Alfred Morris got 4.8 yards uh, per carry last year. His career is 4.6. So he had a pretty good year. He's a young 30, like I said. So, um, I mean... I did drop Alfred Morris for James Conner in one of those leagues. Which would have probably, I think now that you told me about James Conner, I think I would have picked him up instead of Alfred Morris. Yeah, I was really happy to pick up Alfred Morris for free, but in one of the leagues, I decided that that Conner's got way more value right now. Um, I think that Morris does get more fantasy points than Bereta, but um, it will be a split. Um, So like I said, that's the the value of drafting uh, late. So, you know, push for at least after the third preseason game draft or, or, you know, like we did after all the preseason games. Right. Um, so Nate Peterman starts for the Bills this week. Where did that come from? Um, <laughs> he's he's bad at football. Um, but has, has, <laughs> what it, where it's come from is they have a brutal early schedule, and and putting Josh um, Allen to the the. The, throwing them to the wolves yeah it is not good um you so there's another uh what was his name Carr, the guy from houston texans david the, Carr. yeah david Carr. that yeah. uh, got hit like 80 yeah. times <laughs> i mean allen was actually my favorite overall quarterback in this draft and and i i hate that he went to the bills because i don't know that he'll ever get a chance to really show me what yeah. he can do but the bills are being smart by not uh, by not starting him. Their first four or five week schedule is brutal. Um, I mean, Nate Peterman throws tons of picks. Um, he's famous for last year, the Chargers game. Um, they started him over uh, Tyrod Taylor. Uh, it was a horrible move and he threw like five picks. Jesus And um, this year... And There's think, no way they can keep him in, can they? In, in, the, in preseason week one this year, his like second throw was a, was a pick this year in preseason. So... Um, you know, Buffalo is going to be a, a team to target uh, for defenses early uh, in the season. And um, so that's huge. How um, long do you think they keep Allen on the bench? 
Um, at if least for four or five weeks. If he's throwing like three or four picks a, a game. At right. least for four or five weeks. I mean, if you pull up their schedule, I could probably tell you what's, yeah. what what game they're targeting. Um, I know that they have a brutal four or five, uh, four or five weeks. And depending on where they're, when their bye week is, you could probably kind of peg when they're planning on putting him in. But they may have to put him in before that if the guy gets hurt. Um, Nick Foles is going to start for the Eagles. Um, so we've already talked about, you know, a couple calls that I've made that were wrong. Um, this was a call that I made that was right i told people you know don't draft carson wentz especially don't draft him as a top five i saw a lot of people draft him as a top five um you know they won a super bowl with this guy they're not gonna force uh, wentz back when they've got foals there that's why they didn't trade him they got some excellent trade offers um they knew it was going to be a a, a push to get him back to start week one and um so Foles is out there, I think, for a couple, three weeks. And Alshon Jeffrey's going to miss a few weeks, too. So um, that game's tomorrow night or Thursday night, depending on when you, when you guys listen to this. I did, a uh, just for fun, a DraftKings lineup uh, sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, was, I did that one, too. Uh, it was for free. Yeah, I did and, that one, too. Uh, <laughs> that's one that you're like, there's no way I'm going to win this, at least in my opinion. Like, I just don't think there's any possible way because there's such few. Well, isn't uh, that the weird one where you pick one guy and he gets 1.5 points? Yeah, so points? your captain can yeah. get uh, one and a half points, like one and a half times the points that he would get, but he also costs one and a half times the amount to draft right. him. So I went Nick Foles, Tevin Coleman, Dallas Getter, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and Mohamed Sanu. Okay. Um, it's a different format for them. I went Julio Jones because mm-hmm. he's gotten over 100 yards in his last four games against right. the Eagles. I also went with Goddard, too, but I think I did Goddard and Ertz. Um, oh, okay. And I think I picked up Corey Clement because of the he Falcons. Was one are, that I thought about doing. The Falcons are really bad against pass catching running backs. I mean, you can nice. still change it, but that's one of the things we were going to talk about here in a little yeah, while. Yeah, for sure. I just thought of that because no, you were talking about the game tomorrow. Always check for the free. There's a couple free contests um, this week, and I play. Play them all the time. I mean, you can always play the free ones. Um, there's no a, reason to not play the. Free I've one. cashed in the free one before. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, it was it was like twelve bucks or something. But, but still, hey, twelve you know, bucks is more than zero. Um, but one thing though, uh, now this is a different format. But in this other, there's a free one on the main slate for a hundred thousand dollars too. Don't ever play just a lineup in that free one, and and don't play it someplace else. Don't don't you got to play that lineup someplace else. Right. And this is why when I won that twelve dollars, I would have won like two or three hundred dollars in the other contest that I was in and that was the only lineup that I played yeah, in that free one. The free one. So that I, I kind of cut my teeth on that one and learned that lesson. So that's one of the, that's one of our things. Odie and uh, Brian Titus on the Facebook live are trying to figure out if they're the only two watching. So it looks like there's four people watching. So you better, uh, better, uh, get excited i just commented to him yeah they're on the facebook live right now what's up guys uh (laughs) i play titus this week in the listener league oh yeah paulie's creepers against paulie's sleepers yes i love it (laughs) i'm excited i'm excited so uh he he has a good team too so Uh i could easily go down week one okay so do we have more news from around the league um so we're just talking about Nick Foles. I mean, the other thing, if you are playing DFS or playing guys, you know, um, Alshon's out. So um, Nelson Aguilar is a good play. I think Dallas Goder is a uh, good what the heck play. Who, yeah, who is he? Is he going to be one of those that we like see on uh, like Monday morning, like from, uh, or not Monday morning, Friday morning from, you know, Sports Center where he scored like three touchdowns or something? No, not probably not three, but I mean, they're going to run a, a lot of two tight end sets like the Colts and like the Pats. And um, he's a badass. He They drafted him. Uh, I can't remember what college Any guy named to. Dallas. Come yeah. On. And they actually drafted him right before the Cowboys picked. And, <laughs> and the Cowboys really needed a tight end. And I'm pretty sure they were targeting yeah, Dallas Goddard. That would have been nice. Um, but also, you know, Corey Clement is a good play if you're doing DraftKings. Now, this year, we're going to do DraftKings and just focus on the main slate because of logistics. Right. So uh, because of logistics, you're going to go to the website, you're going to see our player pool, and then we're going to finalize the player pool and the juicy lineups on Saturday. It's not We're not going to have time to get all this out, but if you are playing, um, you know, Corey Clement's a good play for tomorrow night um, because of what I said earlier. He had 100 yards and a touchdown in the Super Bowl, and um, the, the Falcons are pretty bad against pass catching backs. Um, other news, uh, Mike Gillisley was picked up by the Saints. He was mm. dropped by the... Uh, 
the uh, Pats. Yeah, because um, they've got like 900 running backs. They do. They do. Eight, 899 now. <laughs> um, so they picked up Jeremy Hill from the Bengals, and it looks like he's going to take over that you know short yardage goal line role, and um, they like him better than Gillisley. I mean, they put Gillisley in, in Guantanamo Bay yeah. after he fumbled. Yep. Um, so I think they couldn't wait to get him, but New Orleans couldn't wait to, to pick him up. And, and what the Saints did this week was really interesting. They had two rookie running backs that that I was looking at heavily trying to figure out which one of these guys was going to get Mark Ingram's uh you know four weeks of work and they dro- they dropped both these guys this week and picked up Mike Gillisley and right now on their active roster they have Alvin Kamara and Mike Gillisley that's, that's it. crazy. I've never so seen anything like them, it. I mean, they're going to get some work, obviously, because Ingram's out. Yeah, so. so if you're in standard leagues, deep leagues, touchdown only leagues, Mike Gillisley is a pickup, too. And so is Jeremy Hill. Um, so, yeah, that was all we were going to talk about for news. What kind of crazy person is in a league that's only touchdowns? I think that's weird. My, I don't think I can do that. My brother. <laughs> Uh, my brother Eric, who has been doing this longer, yeah, I mean, it, I guarantee me, you, it changes the changes the strategy for sure. It sure does. It's touchdowns only. It's scoring only league, and uh, I mean, you know, the points are are figured out, handwritten. That's crazy. You like email in your lineups. It's real old school, and it's a keeper league too. Right. So they could keep like up to four players, and you could keep them for like three spots higher than where you drafted them. So if you drafted the guy in the tenth round, you can keep him for a seven the next year. So it makes it really interesting i mean wow. people like you know we're keeping tyree kill for a sixth rounder and stuff like that yeah. you know so it makes it really interesting but it makes it very hard it's I touchdowns bet, only I bet it's fucking tough there's a lot of them out there before espn and for before all that there was fantasy football a long time ago and it was yeah they were doing on, uh newspapers is what i heard yeah when the newspaper came out whoever was into it would do it on a spreadsheet on graph paper yeah my uncle was telling me about that he and, was like i never did it but we had a couple of guys that yeah would actually keep track for us we'd all play but the uh, the one guy is the one who you had to like mail or yeah you had to call him and give him like your your players or like your stats or whatever or something like that whoever if, you're starting or yeah, whatever and if you if you had like some stat corrections because you saw something that they didn't see right so, and that's why I think some guys just did touch uh, touchdowns only and made it easier probably to keep no track of real stat corrections um, so. When it comes to the listener league, which is something big that we're doing this year that I think a lot of people are involved in and a lot of people are talking smack already. So married with children's like throwing up gifts about me saying that, uh, you know, I'm going to look like a child trying to like work a computer like I can't set my lineup. I, I, I posted a gift back. Um, Dolph Lundgren, you know, I will. <laughs> I saw I that. Will break you. I saw or that. I must break you. I saw and, that. Uh, you guys are getting into it. Yeah. Didn't and he also pound like the cat on the keyboard yep. trying to figure stuff out definitely did that yeah and when i said and when i said i will br- I, or i must break you he posted a gif of a guy failing to break a board like a, a martial artist trying to break a board through some like blocks or something like that it but either way either way uh, i am projected to score more points and i am gonna win so i'm not even gonna go there all right all right i know he's got a good team <laughs> and you were talking about it during the draft you were like man didn't he draft in the 10th in the 10th spot uh yes yeah, i believe he was either 10 he was either 10 or 1 because he was back to back. No, I'm pretty sure he was ten because Wilson was one. Right there, you go. And that's the next guy we want to talk about. Oh yeah, Mr. R. Wilson. I know he'll be listening. Yeah. Last week he had to work and he did most of his draft, but he also queued up his players like Josh did. Mm-hmm. Um, now um, Josh is either now he 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 changed his name. He's not the garbage cats anymore because everybody told him that was the worst fantasy football name of all. I, I, he said it's a reference to some show that I was like, dude. I mean, if I don't know the reference and I don't know the show, then it's a bad. <laughs> Even his wife told him it was bad. I mean, that's and she doesn't care. Shannon doesn't care about this stuff. So even she was like, no, Josh. Gosh, no. Just quit it. So he changed it, and, and uh, I'm in in two leagues with him, and I think he's the cash money hillionaires in this okay. league for Tyreek Hill. I like that. Um, but in the other league, he changed it to Gordon Rams C because he has 
Mel- Melvin Gordon. That might be this league. Too. Okay, I got you. Like, <laughs> he, I, I told him it's it's an improvement, but I think but it's still, definitely. He, I think it's reaching. I think it's reaching. He he tries, <laughs> he tries. God bless him. But uh, he, um, you know, Wilson this week uh, he drafted uh, like three Browns, and, yep. and, and it, it, it auto drafted uh, Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry, and then later on uh, Carlos Hyde. Allegedly, these were auto drafted. Well, for sure that Jarvis Landry and Josh Gordon were, it was. weren't they? I mean, they had to have been because they went back to back and I don't think that they were... And no one would do that, I, right? Yeah, I, I don't think that there's any way that you would do that. Well, he didn't want Browns on his team, so there were a record Just number... Just a, a, a... What is it? The uh, floodgates were broken. Yeah, a record with, number of trade offers the day after a draft that you've ever seen in your life. I mean, each one of us received multiple trade I offers. I ignored all of them because I'm, I'm also one of those people that I, I don't feel confident trading before the season starts i put effort right. into picking my players right i'm gonna see how at least week one goes you want to watch them play football before you decide to yes trade them. right well guys like uh wilson and then odie mm-hmm. uh who might still be on there um you know he he drafted uh saquon barkley and was trying to trade him during the draft <laughs> like it was round two and he was like you know he's over there and i'm like what are you doing there's a trade addicts twitter page and i like <laughs> I added Odie and I that's was like, so here you good. go. You need to be on here. And he was like, oh yeah, I've been following them that's, forever. So, that's so good. Um, but uh, Wilson sent all these trade offers out. But what Josh and Dan realized was, hey, this is a guy desperate to get rid of some players. Let's see what we could get him for. Yeah. And that's a smart thing. I mean, if you see somebody in panic mode, what you and I didn't do and what they did was, okay, let's figure out what we could get Josh right. Gordon and or Jarvis Landry for. Well, um, Josh sent him uh, Sammy Watkins for Josh Gordon and uh Wilson declined that trade. Dan sent him Keelan Cole from the Jaguars, and he accepted the trade. He traded Josh Gordon for Keelan Cole. Uh, that could be the uh, trade of the uh, the league. The thing if is, Gordon is that blows up. Keelan Cole is the number one, and Gordon's nursing a hamstring and hasn't been there. I mean, it's likely that so maybe Cole Wilson gets off to a better a, start. Uh, Wilson has the. Uh, He's got the number. He's got to figure it out. I don't know. He, he he's, wanted, he's trying to lull us to sleep he with wanted these crazy to, trades. He wanted to bet me that Cole would get more fantasy points than Gordon the first five weeks, and I didn't accept it because Gordon isn't starting. He's nursing a hamstring. He hasn't been involved in the offense. He missed OTAs, training camp, everything. So <laughs> Cole may get off to a better start. He really, really may. I'm pretty sure that he offered me uh, Josh Gordon and... Um, what was the other one? The um, Jarvis Landry, Jarvis Carlos, Land- Han- Carlos Hyde. I think he offered me Carlos Hyde and Josh Gordon for Alvin Kamara. Yeah, he he sent out a bunch of trades. And I was like, like that. no, that's he sent out happen. a bunch of trades. Like it's too that. early. Um, but Wilson, you know, he's 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 fired up for this league, and we'll see how he does. But uh, who else? Who else do you think's looking good right now? Is that what you is that what you put in your notes? Because I read your notes, but I wanted to make sure I, yeah. I understood what you were saying. Yeah, I think Titus's team looks really good, um, and I play him this week. I think he drafted one of the better teams I've ever seen him draft. Right. Um, I think Titus is focused. I think he's clear headed and full heart. Can't yeah, lose. Yeah. He. he uh, oh, he can lose. <laughs> Let's not go too far. <laughs> or is, can, it, is it? Is it? What is it? Is it? I was trying to do the Friday Night Lights he, reference. He can lose, but he 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 got off to a really good start, and I think he's got a good team. You have a great team. Um, Josh is going to have to make some moves because he had that auto draft team and it's solid, but right. I mean, he knows he would have had a better team if he would have been able to right. draft it live. Um, Wilson's got a good team. Dan's team just got way better because he he was able to swap Keelan Cole for Josh Gordon. Right. So I think he has Antonio Brown, Josh Gordon, and some other really big wide receiver to, mm-hmm. to start that. So um, we'll have to see what happens. Obviously, it's before the first week, so there's not too much more to talk about on that. But, uh, you know, I wish everybody luck. And uh, we're going to have the coaches call in this year yep. and talk about moves that have been made, talk about, you know, close losses, uh, talk shit, yep. all that fun stuff. So forgot, about, be, uh, forgot about the Bills game, too. We're doing a, we're doing a live podcast at day and yeah, so going to the game we're gonna do a yeah and we're going to the game too uh titus already has tickets um i don't have tickets yet but we're gonna do a live podcast it's gonna be a special episode because yep. you know it'll be sunday right before the game so right. all these you know it'll be after we've made all of our start sit decisions so yep. we're just gonna drink beer and have fun and um i'm uh trying to get a bill's mafia Dude, member we're gonna, to get, stop we're gonna by. get somebody in i've got like three or four tables out of my garage we're gonna yeah. get somebody to go through a table I, somebody's I, gonna go through a table i've contacted even some, if it's a cult i've contacted some og bill bill's mafia people
people and I think they think it's a trap. <laughs> um, I do. I do. And I'm telling them, hey, we're really cool. We, we admire what you do. We want to know more about it. And, right. and one of them was like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, I'm having a hard time now. I've got one that I used to work with, but, um, I want somebody from Buffalo that's, tra- right. that's traveling with the team to stop I've got, by. I've got some, uh, relatives that are huge Buffalo fans and have gone to the, uh, the tailgates in the game. So maybe I can reach out to them. I'll do that. I just thought of it. Um, random thoughts. Don't roster two defenses. Don't roster two tight ends. If you have a second tight end and it's George Kittle or OJ Howard or somebody like that, drop them for a position player. Um, the, you know, once you get outside the top 10, um, those are all a dime a dozen. Same with defenses. If you drafted two defenses, I mean, unless you have a solid plan to say, hey, I like this team's week one, I like this team's week two, I like this team's week three, and you drafted that with a plan, then drop your second tight end and defense for a position player right now. Um, also quarterbacks unless you have two solid quarterbacks somebody um, tweeted at me today and said do I start Cam Newton or uh, Matthew Stafford and I said well that's you know that's a good duo you actually have a tough decision do you want to do do a really quick uh, this or that thing because a lot of the questions we have are this or that yeah we could do that so um, Paul uh, Schroyer Paul Schroyer Paul Schroyer asked, do I start the Rams or Baltimore D this week? Yeah. So my first so thing... you were just saying, don't have two My first thing would roster. be drop one of those defenses, yeah. and um, it's not the Ravens, it's the Rams. Yeah, the Ravens are a stout defense. So um, Jackson and I were, were targeting the Ravens and the Rams, or the Ravens and, uh, and the Saints in all of our drafts because of their first two matchups. I mean, I really don't care about what the top defense ranked is. What if you get Houston's uh, defense in the in the draft what are you doing week one you're starting them at new orleans or at new england that's what i'm doing right now and my qb is tom brady and my <sighs> tight end is rob gronkowski i'm, I'm gonna hate myself yeah so don't start houston week so, one. so you can't do that. i gotta drop somebody but i don't want to drop any guys on my bench because i like the guys on my bench too that's why you don't look and go okay well this is the next best defense on the board and draft them because you bad should not my, be starting them week, week my, one on my end baltimore plays at home versus buffalo week one and then um at Cincy week two. I love both of those matchups. New Orleans plays against uh, uh, Tampa Bay week one and then plays the Browns week two. So those are both great defenses to start off the year and then you could stream after that. Defenses for me are streaming anyway. But um, Paul, um, start Baltimore 100%. Um, You know, the Rams play at Oakland. Um, Baltimore plays um, the Nathan Peterman led um, Bills at home and and we'll be targeting whoever plays Buffalo's defense, uh, you know, the defense of that team all year long. Um, so that's a 100% um, drop the Rams and start the Ravens. Drop the Rams and pick up James Conner, Alfred Morris, Chris Godwin, uh, you know, uh, Kenny Galladay, any of those guys that are out there, take a flyer on one of those guys um, and, 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 you know, thank me later. Um, Jean Caramella. Jean Carlo Mella. John Jean Carlo Mella um, says uh, Alfred Morris or Adrian Peterson this week. I think that's a good good question because it is. because Adrian Peterson new place he looked good in preseason but preseason's preseason um, and then we already talked about Alfred Morris so slight revenge game maybe I mean people yeah. are saying well he didn't play for the Cardinals long enough for it to be a revenge game yeah I don't but, think he gives a shit but it is Washington at Arizona and that is a good question you know when you asked me the Baltimore Rams I, I, I didn't hesitate but this one I have to hesitate a little bit <clears throat> uh, I like Alfred Morris a lot this year I don't like him week one at Minnesota they have a very stout defense also that's likely to be maybe a 50-50 or 60 60 40 split with him or Matt Bereda. Adrian Peterson is playing um, um, at Arizona and um, I, I like his chances a lot better and I like his kind of share of the offense better. Chris Thompson is going to be the pass catching running back, but AP will get 20 plus touches and um, he still has 150 yards. Does, does he yard- have a breakout year this year? No. Not a breakout year, but does he have a great year? No. No. No, but he still has a 150-yard game in him, and it'll probably be one of these first games. Yeah, because he'll be the freshest. Yeah, he, he uh, I think in his first game for the Cardinals last year after they picked him up, after the Saints dropped him, he he dropped 150. Yeah. Uh, and then the Cardinals Cardinals let him go. So I don't see a 150-yard game, but I see he, he can easily get 20 carries for 80 yards and, uh, and may or may not get a tutty. I mean, those are very unpredictable. He won't catch balls, but um, I could see him getting, you know, eight, 
8 to 14 fantasy points pretty easily. Um, I mean, Alfred could easily get you 4 or 5. His yeah. ceiling's probably about the same. That's the thing. Both of these right. players have about the same ceiling. It'll depend on the touchdowns. But I think AP gets more touches, so I say start Adrian Peterson. There you go. Um, and then uh, another question I had was, um, do I drop Latavius Murray or James White for Alfred Morris and a PPR? And that's a tough question too, but because it's a PPR and I don't see Alfred Morris um, getting a lot of touches, and this is from uh, uh, one of my Twitter followers, uh, Dylan, um, I, I say no. Um, I keep both Lat Murray and James White. Um, you know, see how you know James White's going to be used a lot here this first week. He's pretty much their only super healthy running back, and he's going to get a ton of uh, work in the passing game. And um, I think that uh, Dalvin Cook's going to be eased in off this ACL surgery, and they're going to use uh, Murray a lot. So I do like Alfred Morris as a free pickup right now, but not to drop either one of those guys. Um, and then if you want to call uh, Joe, we can move on to the uh, call-in portion. Absolutely. <clears throat> you going to pause it? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we have with us our first uh, official call-in guest um, for the podcast this year, Joe Toscano, Joey Bag of Donuts from Twitter. Joe, how are you? I am great, guys. How are you? Fantastic, man. Uh, I've been told that you're a Steelers fan, and I just really want to just off the bat, I want to hit it hard. How do you feel about Le'Veon Bell? Oh, man. That's like... Uh... That's like setting a match to a to a <laughs> stick of dynamite. Um, I was so angry that as soon as I got home, I wrote an article about it, and then I got on my podcast and just went on a fifteen minute rant and just 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 let everything out about how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm so angry at him. Um, I, I I think a line was crossed. I think we all know that sports is a business. But we have this notion that, you know, the team, the players are playing for the team and they're playing for the fans and stuff like that. And he just blew that out of the water and he basically said, forget my team, forget the fans, forget the city. I'm just playing for myself and it's just a business. That's insane. That's a, it's a very valid point. And the fact is, like, the fact that remains to me is everybody wants to say, you know, hey, he's got a family that he wants to feed. Does he need a hundred fucking million dollars to feed his family? Can I'm you sorry. feed him? Can you feed him on 70 million? Isn't that what they offered him, Joe? What did they offer him? Four years and 70 million? I, I think it was five years, 70 million, something like that, with like 30 some million guaranteed. And I, I did blame him for, I mean, he thought he was worth more that, more than that. Okay, fine, and the Steelers weren't going to, I mean, that was a very high offer for the Steelers anyway, so, I mean, I didn't, I didn't blame him for wanting more money, but for him to skip games, and he has the potential to skip end games, I don't understand that at all. How do you maximize money? What, how do you maximize your earnings when you're forfeiting an $850,000 paycheck every week? Absolutely. He's going to throw away $8.5 million. Well, how do you call it maximizing earnings, you dummy? Absolutely. I see that point exactly. I think it's a very tough spot, and... Um you know, the one thing I want to ask you is I've heard this 10 games a couple times today. Where where are people coming up with the fact that it's just 10 games? That is the threshold for what is considered a full season. That's, um, that's where that comes from. Uh, if he... If he misses, if he plays six games, okay. he is still considered um, a full season, and then he will become a full free agent in 2019. Well, I, I'm with you, man, and I'm not going to get personally too much into on my show, um, you know, the politics of what is right or wrong. I mean, right. I am definitely with you. My job, I feel, is to analyze the the you know implications fantasy football wise that this has but i i just want to say that i'm you know just real quickly i i am 100 percent with what you are saying um his agent has said today that um an overuse of bell could devalue his next contract 
So I had told everybody back in June, and I apologized on Twitter today. I don't know if you saw that, but I, you know, I said I was wrong. I, I said that he will play. His value is is showing what he can do on the field, and they will also you know maximize his use because it's his last year. And Justin has a theory of you know the last year of somebody's contract, they're really going to squeeze the life out of you. But their take on it is, well, yeah, but if you're going to not pay us and you know m- and make him carry it 450 times that may you know devalue him for his next contract how do you feel about that exactly this is i mean it wasn't you it was not just you that was wrong everybody was wrong i mean he was on he was on the top of everybody's list for for best fantasy you know like he was either one of the the first or second or third overall picks right everybody so we've all been fooled everybody including me has expected him to show up for um week one and I mean, just because that's exactly what he did last year. He, you know, right before week one started, he showed up and he, and he played, and, and everything was fine. Right. Um, he showed up nine. Just, uh, he showed up uh, nine days before the first game last year, and and you know, once Labor Day passed and everything, I was. That's why I said yesterday, like James Conner has value right now, no matter what happens, because you I, know. He can't yeah. show up four days before the game. I mean, now we know that he's out. But you know, what have you been following today? Have you, you know, have you followed anything about his his agent was on Sirius Satellite Radio today? His offensive linemen have made some comments. Marquise Pouncey yeah, they're called, is they're, not they're, happy. They're dragging his name through the dirt right now. Oh yeah, I mean this this took everybody by check. I've never seen teammates turn on one of their own before. I mean, there have been plenty of people with contract, you know, uh, disputes, but I've never seen teammates just, just go after and, and, and just, they were just, I mean, they we're all just shocked and angry. Just, just everybody. Steelers fans, the, the, the Steelers team, fantasy owners. I mean, if you, I, in many drafts, I drafted Le'Veon Bell, but I forgot to draft James Conner and I hurried up and got him in a couple of my leagues um, on Monday when he didn't show up. But yeah, and, and but in terms of fantasy, I think James Conner is going to be okay. He looks great in the preseason, and he is not Le'Veon Bell, but he might be. Well, let's say eighty percent of a Le'Veon Bell, or, or three quarters of a Le'Veon Bell, and that's still pretty good. And I think one thing, at least in the short term, the, the Steelers are going to want to prove. That I think I so think too. Yeah, I think they're going to prove. Hey, we don't need Le'Veon Bell yeah. to win, and they're uh, that's all they said over and over again today. Is when they weren't trashing Bell, they were praising James Conner and saying, "Yeah, he's good enough. He's ready. He'll, he'll be ready to go. We'll, we'll be fine." So I think they want to prove that James Conner is um, is good enough. I think uh, you're right. Them. Play. Now, so, D'Angelo yeah, Williams, uh, Connor, go ahead. D'Angelo Williams proved that you know anybody can have value in that spot, and he was at the end of his career, thirty years old. This guy is uh, in his second year. He was drafted by the Steelers in the third round uh, last year, right? Yeah, and he's a yeah. Pittsburgh boy through and through. I looked him up today. He went to high school in Pittsburgh. He went to the University of Pittsburgh, and now he's black and yellow, black and yellow. I mean, I, you know, is it time for everybody to stop getting pissed and just embrace this kid? What if he goes out and gets thirty touches and one hundred and seventy all-purpose yards and two touchdowns this week? I mean, the Cleveland run defense is very good, so I doubt that happens. <laughs> but I mean, you know, is it time to just say, hey, you know, next man up? Exactly. Um, last year, he was, you know, he was a rookie, a little bit shaky. Uh, but this year, uh, so far in the preseason, he has looked very good. So, um, yeah, I, I can see. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if he was, uh, Cleveland's defense looks pretty good. So I don't know about this game, he'll have a monster game. But, I mean, I could totally see that because at the University of Pittsburgh, he was basically a monster. He put up huge numbers and he did everything he had so, two great years there his freshman year was kind of a wash his junior year he was hurt his sophomore year he posted uh, uh, almost 300 touches for 1765 yards and 26 touchdowns and uh, his senior year he was a little lighter it was 216 touches for uh, 1092 and 16 touchdowns but he also had 21 catches for 300 yards and four touchdowns so he had 20 combined touchdowns in both of those big years so he can carry a workload yeah yeah he's um 
yeah, I, I, I it, it's hard for me to objectively evaluate him because I, uh, you're just I seeing red. Big, uh, <laughs> I'm a big Pitt fan and I just love him. And uh, you know, he's a, he's a great kid too, because he's overcome cancer. So, Oh um, yeah. I forgot completely about that. Okay. Tell me more yeah, about that. I had no idea. That's a big, yeah, big part a, of the story. Yeah. He had, um, I believe, uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma or something like that. Wow. And, and just the way he carried himself, um, you know, overcoming cancer and, you know, just, just his work ethic. It was just amazing. Um, I saw a great, somebody had a great tweet. They said, by the age of 23, James Conner can overcome actual cancer and a locker room cancer. Oh, wow. <laughs> good, good move. Uh, I like it. Literal, like it. literal and figurative cancer. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so you write for uh, Flurry Sports? Yeah. How long have you been writing for them? Oh, uh, not too long. It's just been a few months. I also um, I also heard you mention your podcast, and, and where can people hear you rant and rave about the Steelers on your podcast? Yeah, that is, it's called The Donut Bag. Um, I just started that. I've been, um, I'm seven episodes in, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, Mostly I'm, Pittsburgh stuff, but we do goofy things too. So, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I'll, uh, well, that's I, what I, I love would, about uh, podcasts. You don't have to know what you're doing and, and it's, it's very organic and you can just turn the mic on and, uh, and, and get going. And, uh, I, I did listen to your first episode, um, yesterday kind of preparing for this and, um, you had some interesting topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, um, I, I like to have. Uh, a potpourri of, of uh, segments and things. So, well, that's yeah, why I like to follow you, man. I was going to talk about that. I'm glad you mentioned potpourri. I mean, one of the one of the interesting things about your Twitter handle and um, your Twitter handle is Joey Bag of Donuts, and there's donuts in, in your in your name. I notice you move them around. Like sometimes it's in your name, and sometimes it's after your name. And I notice sometimes there's a half eaten donut, which I hate when I go into work and someone ate that half a donut. And that's the box. such a bullshit move. Isn't that a dick move? <laughs> Yeah, my Twitter is basically a Twitter addict, and I yeah I'm, I'm on there. I don't sleep much, so I'm on there basically twenty four seven. And it's just the things. Basically, my Twitter is just things that pop in my head. Stream so, of consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's whatever whatever I'm thinking at the time. I tweet about, and um, yeah, I tweet about basically everything except except my trips to the bathroom. <laughs> it's fantastic. And I mean, is that why you think you have 14,000 followers just because you're on there all the time and because you um, just say what's on your mind? Yeah, that's it. That's basically, <laughs> it. I'm, I'm there all the time. I have ta- I talk to people all the time. I always and I always like to do goofy pull. Like with the press, that's Britney Spears song, or you know, should should pineapple be on pizza or something like that? So I'm always doing polls or or stuff, or always you know, goofy conversations. Right. I just I just try to keep it funny and goofy, and yeah, I've I've uh, I've met a lot of people on there, so that's 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 probably it. So so I've got a, a dream scenario for you guys right now. So what if the game hap- the game starts this weekend and. Le'Veon Bell pulls a Bobby Boucher and shows up at halftime, helps them win the Bourbon Bowl. Do you think that's happening or no? <laughs> I don't the thing. It could happen, but you know, with the way his teammates trashed him today, I, I I don't know if I want to, if, if I'm him, I don't know if I want to show up in, in that locker room. <laughs> that's I mean, true. They're really mad at him. Can yeah. this relationship be repaired? On the way in here, I talked to my brother. And uh, I've got my brother following you on Twitter, by the way, as well, because we're all big Seinfeld fans, and we love that you post the sign. Love the sign. Oh, but my, oh yeah. My brother made a great comment. He said, you know, are these guys going to block for him when asked? I legitimately am wondering that, too. I'm wondering if 
say, you know, some linebackers coming, and instead of blocking them, they just let them go by and uh, <laughs> let them, uh, smack Levy on Bell really hard. It's like, how you like? How you like that, buddy? That's what it's like to not be a teammate. I I don't know that this relationship can be repaired. You know, the Colts are the odds-on Vegas favorites for the team that Le'Veon Bell was going to land in next year. And I can't believe people actually bet on this. But people have also talked about the Texans because Lamar Miller isn't really built to 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 carry a, a a big workload. In my opinion, I think that's why the Dolphins off him. And if you look, he breaks down later in games, which is what you don't want. He, yeah, you, know, you want him to get stronger. Yeah, and he breaks down and. and Obviously, San Francisco right now could really use a running back. What do you think the odds are that he gets traded like very soon or at some point here in this season and is never a Steeler again? Do you think that's a possibility? You know what? Any at this point, anything is possible. I, I could, you know, that, that's what most Steeler fans are saying: is um, release him, rescind this franchise tag, trade him, and you know, there's there's not a lot of teams that have that kind of cap space. But at the same time, you know. I, I totally didn't expect him to do what he's done. So it, 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 no, nothing, nothing's impossible right now. Uh, I could see, I could see a trade happening. Sure, why not? The the range of outcomes are right now. He plays week two because we know he's out week one, right? Right. So the, the range of outcomes is he plays week two to anywhere from, you know, not playing until week 10 to him being traded sometime in the next few weeks. I know the Colts have the tr- uh, the cap room. I don't see the Colts making a big blockbuster move like that. I don't think they'd make like a move like that. The Colts are not going to do that. But I, I could like. see, I don't know what the San Francisco 49ers um, situation is, but I could see them doing it now. Do they have to resend the, um, the, uh, the offer? Because it hasn't been signed. Here's what would happen for a trade. I, I think if they rescind the offer, then Bell becomes a free agent. Yeah, if they if they take it back, yeah, if they take it back, he can go uh, for free. Like, or nobody has to trade him. The only way a trade would happen is if Bell, because I mean, technically, Bell is not under contract. So, it's, what would have to happen is Bell would have to sign the contract. Um, then the Steelers would be able to uh, trade him. So then you pick up Le'Veon Bell for fourteen point five million, and then uh, decide whether you want to uh, sign him to a long term contract. You've got him for a one year rental of a uh, uh, um, of that price, right? Yeah, but they can't even negotiate that long term deal until the end of this year. Okay. So it's a team that you know says, "Hey, is he a good scheme fit? Do do we have everything else in place to make a strong run at it? Is this the one piece of the puzzle that we need to make us to give us that push, and then we could decide later whether he's worth all that money, or maybe even say, you know what, we're not even planning on keeping him next year, but we need him right now. And there's teams that need him right now. Can the Niners make a legitimate push with Jimmy G and Marquise Goodwin and Reuben Foster and, and Kyle Shanahan led off? offense do they have the pieces in place to make a run if they go get adrian peterson do the colts do the texans what the steelers need what they what they're what they're deficient at is inside linebacker so if some team has like a great linebacker then maybe it's possible and maybe they think well we'll you know we'll just do our best with with james connor or or a committee or whatever but i mean that that's you know, defensive help is really what the Steelers need. So if, well, um, Reuben Foster missed last season, and uh, he, I believe, is suspended for the first two games for some trouble he got into. So maybe the Niners say, "Well, let's get rid of that problem and uh, and <laughs> and tr- trade the devil we know for the devil we don't know." I guess I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, what what are your predictions for the rest of the year? Um, it can be Steelers related. It can be any kind of NFL related. What are your predictions? Yeah, for we this also season? wanted to know. We also wanted to know a few players that you really like this year. I asked you if you wanted to talk about three or four players. So, yeah, whatever you want to talk about as far as NFL. Well, in terms of how the Steelers will do, I think that they're actually going to the Super Bowl, and I. I think they learned from last year because they were such a heavy favorite, but I think they got super cocky and they were just looking forward to uh, beating New England in the playoffs and they were obsessed with that. And I think they overlooked a lot of things to get there. So I think they've learned from that. And this is really one of their 
best chances. I mean, Ben's getting old. Even Antonio Brown is, is getting up there in age. So this might be one of their last best chances. Is this their window? I mean, I love that you're you know you're sticking by your team. Do you you think they're a Super Bowl team with or without Le'Veon Bell? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, yeah, I I I, I do because uh, Ben is. Uh, Let's say let's say he's a top ten quarterback. You know that's the. the I, I think he is. Yeah, right around. I think right around maybe maybe ten. So yeah, I think he is good enough. He still has you know he still has uh, um, a lot of good games in him. Antonio Brown is I think the single best wide receiver in the league. Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. Juju Smith Schuster is. I mean, he has the potential to be really good. He had a great rookie year, so the offense has the potential to be really good. You know, even even if the running game is not as good with Le'Veon, without Le'Veon Bell, I think they'll still make do. And the, the defense is a big question mark, but I, I think they'll be they'll be good enough. So I think I think it's going to be a, a situation where the the Steelers put up a lot of points and, and win a lot of high scoring games. Well, a lot so of people I, are saying that you know it, it's it's time for New England to be dethroned, and they've had so many injuries and so much uncertainty, and Tom not showing up, and and Gronk might have got traded, and all this stuff. You know, there's so much uncertainty sw- swirling around that. A lot of people are saying that the AFC is up for grabs this year. So um, that's a nice take, man. I mean, I, I would expect nothing less. You're a Steelers fan. <laughs> yeah, and and well, here's the thing. I'm I'm saying that the Steelers are going to make the Super Bowl, but only if they don't play New England because they can never beat New England. It's like their 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 Achilles heel or whatever you want to call it. They just cannot beat New England. So I think I think they'll make the the Steelers will make the playoffs and somehow avoid New England. I think New England will will you know lose somewhere and um and that's that's what will we'll let the Steelers uh, make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but Joey, let me give you a let me give you a scenario. What if you guys go 12 and 4 and and the Pats go 10 and 6 and you've got that home game versus the Pats? Are you assuming that you're playing in Foxborough and you can't beat them or are you saying we can't beat them no matter what? <laughs> I think there's I I I think Bill Belichick has some kind of hex or maybe he cheats. I don't know, but he is. He's I, maybe he cheats. I think. I think. I think you just add all of those together, and that's why. It's I mean, like, you're, you're talking to Colts fans, so we all know he cheats. <laughs> we don't speculate on whether he cheats or not. We just. Oh. It's whether or not he's gotten caught. And he's insanely good coach. That's what I, he is also a very good that's coach. The only way I can say. The say other it. thing I wanted to talk about with with the Steelers was how do they keep getting all these bad ass mofo wide receivers? I mean, now they've got James Washington on the come up. You still have Emmanuel Sanders is, that's in the league and doing the, very who's well. The wide receiver coach, maybe that's it. Is it their scout? Is it their wide receiver coach? Is it? I mean, they just keep getting badass wide receivers. I mean, right now, James Washington is good enough that they're going to put Juju in the slot, and I think Juju is going to kill in the slot. I mean, what do you think? You got to hand it. I mean, you got to hand it to um, Kevin Colbert and the uh, you know the the staff for 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 drafting these people. But yeah, there is something about the way that they're developed with the Steelers that, yeah, it's like they're, they're just a, a team that's always stacked at a wide receiver. Um, you're right. I mean, I mean, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster last year had one of the best um, rookie wide receiver seasons ever. And James Washington right now looks like a beast. He basically looks like either Anquan Bolden 2.0 or Heinz Ward 2.0. Just a guy that will just, you know, out fight anybody for the ball. Maybe not the fastest guy ever, but we'll just we'll just fight for every ball and win those combat catches. So yeah, it looks like they have another uh, good one in James Washington. I think so, and I think that's a great comp, man. Somebody like um, you know, like that can go up and get that contested caught ball and and those three guys man i mean um you need somebody to step up at at tight end i mean jesse james the outlaw i know he's six foot seven jesus christ (laughs) um but also um there's another guy on who's your other tight end and i think he's nursing an injury what's going on there vance mcdonald there we go big sleeper um a potential sleeper um his problem is he's always hurt um, so he's the one that's nursing the injury. I was reading about it uh, earlier. He's a question mark for this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, I'd say yeah. It's 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 questionable right now. Uh, 
he's just he he has the potential to be really good. Um, they traded for him right at the beginning of right before the season started. Yeah, they traded the, with the Niners, right? Yeah, yeah, and he did pretty. He did all right, but you know they were really excited about him this year because you know he has a year under his belt and he has to learn the playbook and he, you know he's he's you know fully entrenched with the team. But then he gets hurt. It seems like he gets hurt all the time. So he has good potential and he has good chemistry with Ben. So if he could get healthy. That is a major tight end sleeper. Right so there. he's the number one over Jesse James if they're both healthy, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jesse James is nice, and he'll always be a legend in Pittsburgh because of that New England game. And, you know, the, the rallying cry for, for the Steelers is, Jesse James caught it. Um, <laughs> but, um, he, he's just, he's average to below average. He's not very fast. Yeah, he's a big guy, and he's okay at catching, but he's just not very fast, so it's it's, it's hard for him to get open. He's a pretty good red zone target, but... He's not he, very athletic. The other question is, yeah. and no one knows this, but I, I, I would assume you would. We talk about handcuffs. You talked about drafting Le'Veon Bell and not getting James Conner, um, but you tried picking him up. Who's James Conner's backup? I have no idea. Stephen Ridley is... Uh, Really from the from the Pats? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's not bad. They picked him up, I believe, from waivers last late last year, and he's not bad. He's you know uh, you know not not if 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 he was your number one guy, you're in big trouble. But you know like to, to serviceable backup. Play. Yeah, yeah, serviceable backup. So many teams then, end up getting the Pats dregs. Like Mike Gillisley was just picked up. We were talking about this um, earlier, and 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 Stephen Ridley, I guess, is the backup over there. I didn't even know that. I mean, the Pats just wave guys, and other teams just scramble to go pick them up. I mean, is that how deep they are at running back? That their their trash is your treasure. I told you they had eight hundred running backs. I guess, but um, I think uh, Deion Lewis is going to be. Uh, pretty strong option in Tennessee this year. I think so too, man. Uh, he is so much better at pretty much anything than uh, than Derrick Henry. Even goal line, which is unbelievable because he's like half his size. But he's actually better, at, you know, in the red zone statistically, analytically. Um, it really, the only thing that that Derrick Henry is better at is uh, is yards after uh, contact, um, and that's because he's two hundred sixty five pounds. Yeah. But everything else, uh, Deion Lewis is better at. So I think you're right. That could be a big sleeper. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. Is there anything else that you wanted to ask before we got out of here, Polly? Uh, just wanted to uh, remind everybody, Joey Bag of Donuts on Twitter. It's an awesome account to follow. Um, he writes for Flurry Sports, and the podcast is The Donut Bag. That is, is an awesome name. I appreciate you taking the time, man. And definitely uh, follow us, and we'll stay in touch with you as well. Guys, thank you so much. This was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was perfectly timed, man, having the Pittsburgh guy on for today. Lots to talk about with Bell. We'll post it later so you could share, and uh, I will uh, look forward to following you. Like, you know, we've been uh, we've been uh, tweeting back and forth pretty good here lately. Awesome. Last thing before you go, do you do you consider a Yenzer a slur, or is that something that you're proud of? Because we're Hoosiers over here in Indiana. It is. It's something to be proud of. Um, I'm told I have somewhat of a Pittsburgh accent, although I try to hide it. But yeah, every <laughs> every Pittsburgher has like they, they can bust out their their yinzer and say you're gonna have a little Iron City, <laughs> Iron City, so, some Iron City yeah, beer. Over there. Iron City, yeah. So yeah, we we all have that accent, whether we choose to use it or not. But, yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a thing of pride. Yeah, I had a buddy that I worked with back in the day, and he went to he was a big Pittsburgh fan. I think he was from Pittsburgh, and he um, he like went on vacation for a weekend or something. And I told him he's got to pick me up some Iron City because he always talked about it, and he brought it back. And I'm not gonna lie, man, I'm not a uh, I'm not a beer connoisseur, but it was something that I was a fan of. So you guys are doing it right down there, even if Iron City is not maybe the uh, the most highest end of craft beers. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks for having, uh, thanks for, you know, calling in. And uh, we'd love to have you later on in the year and kind of uh, rehash everything we talked about today. See how everything shakes out in Pittsburgh. Would you like to come on later on in the season? Oh, sure. I'd love to. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Joe. God bless. I appreciate it. Awesome, man. Have a good one. You do. 
That was a great interview. I appreciate it. I mean, it wasn't even an interview. It was just a dude that we were talking to about football. That's what it was. It, it was great. And uh, I had never personally talked with Joe before, but um, I, I loved his account. I loved his perspective. I love that he was just a regular dude that likes fantasy football. And he's obviously a big fan of the Steelers. He says they're going to the Super Bowl. I love it. And I and, wanted to call him out as like a, that's a homer move, but like he made good points. He made valid points of why they should get there. That's what everybody should be saying right now before the games have played. We're yes. going. The Cleveland yeah. Browns fans think they're going. God love them. They're not. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. You know, the no. Arizona Cardinal fans think they're going to the Super Bowl. They are not. The Miami Dolphins, you know, but the Steelers, they could go. Yeah. I think that, you know, out of the teams, I think that New England might falter this year. I think out the, they would be on the short list of teams that I would say could make it. And yes, I think they could do it without Le'Veon Bell. Absolutely. I think New England's not even like, I feel like they're not even on the same level of they care, but like, I feel like they just know like what they're doing. Like, it's hard to explain. Like, it's a well-oiled machine. Wasn't man. it like <laughs> something like, uh, you know, Belichick's like out at like a NBA game, like the night before a playoff game, which obviously they didn't win in the Super Bowl or whatever. But I don't know. I just feel like they're like kind of taking their foot off the gas. I don't think they're the uh, stomp on your throat and kill you like they used to be. Yeah, it's going to all dissolve here really soon. I mean, yeah. you know, somebody's going to retire, somebody's going to move on, and I think it may all kind of domino effect Gronk and Brady and Bell. Bill, they'll they'll all leave. Yeah. So. Th- one of the things that we needed to get into because I did put a hundred dollars into my DraftKings account is get into those uh, DraftKings and those daily fantasy. I mean, we are going to talk about the juicy lineup, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk. People have been uh, waiting for it. We're going to talk uh, mainly me. We're going to talk DraftKings, and and the juicy lineup is not announced tonight. Oh, okay. Um, so this is what we're going to do, and this is going to be the format for the rest of the season. Right now, we're going to talk about our our players that are in our pool. Yep. And you can play cash along with Jackson, or you can play tournament along with Polly, and they're two totally different formats and two totally different theories on how you should play and what you are going to be doing is a mixture of the two Um, our listeners can do what they're comfortable with basically if you play a cash game um, you are trying to double your money and you're trying to beat half the people you're playing against you can play head to head and and you just have to beat one person. I think there's more sharks doing that, and you shouldn't do that. Right. I think you should get into the big 200 player um, 50-50s, and as long as you're one of the 100 best, um, you'll double your money. Now, that's with Jackson's game, and Jackson's going to have a pool of players to choose from so you can create your own lineups. Now, you can get a lineup generator on your phone and plug in the players you want, and if you want to use our pool players, that's kind of what we were encouraging you to do if you say yeah fuck that guy i don't like him you could take him out of the pool and and substitute your own player that you think we've missed but basically you could use this lineup generator and say well i want 50 percent you know tom brady i want 25 percent cam newton i want 25 percent andy dalton and then all the other players that you want and it'll randomly create some uh, lineups you're going to be playing multiple lineups um you'll be doing uh jackson's with the cash and then you'll be doing um probably one tournament a week with my juicy lineup and um, what we're encouraging our listeners to do last year, we just posted a ton of lineups. We were like, play this lineup, play this lineup, play this lineup. We're not going to do that this year. We're going to post our player pool and encourage you to kind of create your own lineups. And that's what we did towards the end of the year last year. And there's guys that actually did better than us on, you know, with our own pool, just because they had a better mixture of the guys than we did. Um, But we're going to, you know, once a week on Saturday, post our juicy lineup. And that's the one that we're going to be hammering with your money. Right. And that's the one that we're going to recommend people if they just play like uh, Dylan, um, you know, uh, hit me up on uh, uh, Twitter today and said, if I just play one lineup, you know, if I just play one wide receiver quarterback stack, you know, what would you recommend? And I told him we're going to post it on the website later this week. And that's what we recommend. Um, so you're putting in a hundred bucks and we're going to probably bet about $20 of it this week. And part of this is bankroll management. Right. So if we lose all that twenty dollars then next week we'll probably be betting 15 of your dollars right if we win and we get you to 120 dollars then next week we'll probably be betting 25 so if we lose we're going to back off the bet if we win we'll increase the bet it's kind of like playing blackjack and it's bankroll management you're going to be able to play for a while we want you to win money Mm -hmm. um but it's definitely going to last you the season doing it this way and um 
Um, basically, we've got you know the pools that are going to go up on the website tonight or tomorrow morning, depending on when Jackson gets around to it. Uh, by the way, Jackson couldn't make it today. He's out at the track, yes, and he's working with that. You know, they made that dirt track, yeah, the dirt inside track, the track inside and, of IMS. Yeah, and they have a race tonight, yeah. so um, he couldn't make it. But he sent me two lineups that he likes. These aren't the official juicy lineups, but something to work off of. And then if you go to the website, polysleepers.com, we'll be posting uh, the player pool that we'd like for you to use. And we're basically going to take these 300 players and, and and narrow them down to 30 players that we like, the guys that we think have the best matchups. And, um, and then on Saturday, we're going to go in and add and delete a few players and, and post our juicy lineups. And we encourage you to like, you've got to like, even on Sunday morning, just cause we said, play this guy, like look and make sure he's playing. I mean, things happen in practice and warm ups before the games. Um, I also want to say that, you know, this is for entertainment purposes only. You know, if you want to um, gamble money, I put 50 bucks in this week. It's mm-hmm. not my lunch money. It's not my kid's book rental. It's right. not the rent. It's money I can afford to lose. So hopefully gamble responsibly. Gamble we are not resp- responsible for anything that you do. Yeah. So I'm saying that because I don't want anybody saying, hey, you know, you you asshole, you lost me money. Yeah, I we're mean, not getting any kind of lawsuits up in here. You're a grown person and uh, you can make that decision for yourself. But we are definitely trying to. That was definitely a good call. I would not have thought about that. And then I probably would have gotten some sort of cease and desist or some sort of lawyer coming up my ass no, trying to steal the rest of my money. You have to make the disclaimer nowadays. Oh, yeah, for it's, one, sure. it's one thing that I learned. And, um, you know, we're not charging any money for this, but hopefully we will in the future. And, yeah. and we haven't done Patreon or anything like that yet, but we're hoping to um, get this going. I want to make this all a free offering like I did last year. And um, and uh, we can build from that. But and if you know any sponsors, send them our <laughs> send way. Them our way. So basically, look and see. There's going to be free lineups. We talked about one of them earlier. There's a free lineup in the main slate this uh, this week too. Filter on free, and you'll see that there's money involved. There's two one hundred thousand dollar tournaments this week that you can play for free. So go in and play for free. Um, also, while you are um, early in the stages, you can play as a beginner and enter the beginner tournaments. Do it as long as they'll let you. You have to actually win quite a bit of money before they consider you not a beginner anymore. I can't do the beginner tournaments anymore, but I played in beginner tournaments for most of the, my first year and part of last year too. So do the beginner tournaments. They're easier to cash in. Um, look for the tournaments where they limit the entries. There's going to be a big tournament and it'll say limit one or limit three. Um, those are very good uh, tournaments to enter because the big sharks that do the lineup generators that throw in a hundred lineups can't do those tournaments and it's a lot more organic and you can win money. So I especially like like if there's if you don't know which one to do pick the limit one and that means that everybody can only play one lineup in that tournament or oh, the they limit should do three. It, they should do it with all of them like that well yeah most of them like are open it up to like a hundred thousand people but only one lineup yeah and some of them are like that but most of them you could put in as many lineups as, as you want shitty and there's obviously a point of no return where you right. can put in a thousand lineups and there's no way for you to make money because of how much money you've spent right. but so those are some uh strategies some other strategy is like the flex is uh in the flex spot playing a tight end because of his price not because that guy is going to score more than the running backs or wide receivers but because there's guys this week that are like $3,000 that allow you to spend so much money elsewhere. Yeah. So uh, Jackson really wanted me to make a point on this, like tell people how you build a lineup. I go in, I pick a defense, I pick a tight end, I pick a quarterback, and I try to make those all the cheapest plays I can with the highest upside for the lowest amount of money in most situations and then have the money to spend at the running back and wide receiver positions. If there's uh, a couple tight ends that I like, like I, got, I like some cheap tight ends this week, I'll play another tight end in the flex and then you've got a ton of money to, to stack up on your, in DraftKings, it's two running backs, three wide receivers and a flex and a defense, no kickers. That's why I love uh, DraftKings. I guess FanDuel has has gone away with kickers now too, mm-hmm. but you know, fuck them. They, they're too late. Somebody, uh, somebody's doing, uh, one of these uh, sites are doing like an all kicker only league, like an only kicker league because Pat McAfee's involved with it. 
So it's like, I think it's like only kickers. <laughs> well, now that Pat has left Barstool Sports, he's I don't free know. to do whatever he wants. If he wants to do an all kicker fantasy football league or whatever, it's he's like a DraftKings, like it's a tournament or something. Oh, like so that. he's doing his own tournament sponsored. Like, I think on. it's sponsored. Yeah. Like it's, it's pretty interesting. I want to look for it and see what it looks like. That sounds like something crazy Pat would do. Um, you know, I saw a shirt one time and it said, uh, it said, you could be anything in this world that you want to be unless you're Pat McAfee, then just be Pat McAfee. <laughs> um, so some other strategies are to stack the running back with the defense. The big play this week is to play Alex Collins with the Ravens. Idea being that the Ravens is going to put the ball back into the offensive hands and then the running back's going to get more of a chance to run and the running back's going to be icing away the game late. Um, we like stacking with the comeback players. So like this week we'll be doing Bengals stacks because this is what we did last year. This is how this all got started was the Rams at the Colts week one. We knew the Colts weren't going to be good. So I stacked the Rams against the Colts and brought it back with Jack Doyle and, and Jared Goff had 300 yards and Cooper Cup had 90 yards and a touchdown and Todd Gurley had a touchdown and a bunch of yards and it was just a great play and we won money. So we're going to lather rinse and repeat this year yeah, by cool. <laughs> stacking Andy Dalton with uh <laughs> with a combination of AJ Green, uh Tyler Eifert, John Ross, Joe Mixon. Mixon, Mixon really hasn't had his coming out party and right. how many times have you seen the Colts give somebody their that, like, NFL coming yep. out party? It's going to happen. And they got gashed by they're, Alfred Morris and they're, like, they're going to get gashed by by Joe Mixon this week and and what you what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of big Bengal stacks like that and then come back with uh Jack Doyle or T.Y. Hilton or Eric Ebron on the other side because the idea being if they smash us, we're going to have to get out there and keep throwing it so that other guy is going to get the play too. So always look for that big play. You know, uh, some good stacks this week are like the the Houston guys at New England and then coming back with with Gronk. Yeah. You know, stacking Watson with Will Fuller and and DeAndre Hopkins and then coming back with Gronk. Can't wait to see. I hope Will Fuller is what I what I hope he is. He's another questionable couple, guy with a, a couple leagues. Well, watch his cue. He's yep. questionable with a hamstring. If he mm. doesn't play, Bruce Ellington is going to be a huge DraftKings play. He had like five catches for 50 yards and a tutty in the preseason. Will Fuller has been held out. He's got the hamstring. He's a speedster and a speedster with a hamstring could be an issue. So unfortunately, I they don't can, know. They can pull that as they're catching a pass on you. <laughs> I don't know if Will Fuller is playing this week. Right. So um, what we talk about is contrarian play and we try to when we're doing GPP tournaments we try to um, you know eat the chalk when we need to and fade the chalk when we need to and the chalk is going to be the play that most people are playing sometimes you need to play that play just because it's going to be a good play right. and it's what Evan Silva calls a free space now Evan Silva is somebody you need to follow on YouTube you need to follow on Twitter if you're into uh, DFS he is the EF Hutton of DFS and I've gotten him to comment a few times yeah. um, because I called him that and he appreciated it I, <laughs> I, I you know game recognized game game. But um, a lot of times he'll say, you know, that's a free space. James Conner is probably going to be a free space this week. He's, I think a lot of people are going to play him. He's $4,500 on DraftKings and Le'Veon Bell isn't starting. So everybody's going to play him. Um, people will say, well, I want to fade that because I've got this other play that I like better. Um, so I'm going to not play him in all of my lineups. The one that I'm going to fade him for is Royce Freeman, who is the same price. And he got announced as a starter this week. I've been talking about Royce Freeman all summer long. Um, he's one of, you know, Paulie's huge sleepers. He's not a sleeper anymore. He was going in the third and fourth round of drafts right. towards the end of the summer. But for the same price, I won't play 100% James Conner. I'll play uh, Royce Freeman. Um, but we're going to post the player pool. You know, I'm not going to talk about all these guys, but basically, you know, the quarterbacks that we have kind of uh, keyed on is uh, Drew Brees at home versus Tampa Bay. Um, and Tampa Bay's secondary is horrible. They've got Ryan Fitzpatrick playing uh, in uh, lieu of uh, Winston, who's out for suspension. We've got Deshaun Watson at New England. I think that could turn into a shootout. We've got Andy Dalton playing at Indy. We've already talked about that's definitely got shootout material. We've got uh, possibly Dak Prescott's kind of on the cutting block right now. They're playing at Carolina. Um or are they playing at home? Well, they play Carolina. I can't remember if it's at home or away. Case Keenum at home versus Seattle. I think a lot of people will fade this because they just see Seattle and they think, oh, Legion of Doom. Like, Yeah, but they're, they're not 
anymore. No, and Earl Thomas like just reported to camp today. I don't even know if he's going to play week one. That defense is not like what it used to be. So I think Case Keenum is. I think Case do, Keenum could have a big year. I think he could do very well, especially for his price of fifty one hundred dollars right. on DraftKings this week. And then the other one, and man, you're going to probably laugh, but you know we did this a lot last year. I mean, Tyrod Taylor is is in the mix. And one of the reasons why is because Pittsburgh employs a zone uh, secondary most of the time, and Tyrod Taylor is lethal against the zone. He actually struggles really bad against man coverage. But you know Pittsburgh's not going to change and go to a man just for one yeah, guy. So exactly. um, he'll probably he'll probably outplay his price and be a great price this week. But the other one is Blake Bortles, Blake the Snake. Uh, I'm a I'm a fan of Blake Bortles. You are. I thought I just, you were going to laugh on that. I just one. I like I like the way he plays. I just like watching him play. I think he's usually he's. he's He's exciting. I mean, he does make some mistakes, but fuck it. So did uh, Brett Favre. He was like the number 11 fantasy football quarterback last year, and he was like number eight the year before yeah. that. He basically like... He runs in, he throws, he throws <laughs> and, it in and there. And they're, they're usually behind at the end of the game, and he's having to chuck it, but I think that that Giants game could be interesting. They, they've they got not a very good secondary. I think that could turn into a pretty big shootout, and I think that he outplays his DraftKings price. So those are the quarterbacks that we're looking at. Um, um, and obviously stacking them with their respective players. I really, really, really like James White this week for only 4000 bucks because uh, Sony Michelle is hurt. Rex Burkhead had that partially torn ligament. I think James White's going to get a ton of work. I already told you I like Royce Freeman. Um, I like um, playing Hunt this week over Melvin Gordon and they play each other and I was talking to somebody about this. This is a classic trap play on D- DraftKings. They have... Um, Kareem Hunt on the road priced at 6900 and they have Melvin Gordon at home in the same game priced at 6800 so they're trying they're to wanting get, you to take Gordon yeah and 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 KC actually their DVOA against pass catching running backs was one of the best so he won't catch a bunch of balls and uh, Kareem Hunt uh, for a hundred dollars more on the road nobody's going to play him but that's the play you need to make I could be wrong right. this is all predictive this is all you just know, what your what your opinion is but I've seen that trap play a hundred times and they're trying to get you to pay and go oh well, why wouldn't I play Melvin Gordon for a hundred bucks less at home that's the trap it's a trap <laughs> Play Kareem Hunt on the road. I like uh, I like David Johnson uh, at home for only eighty eight hundred bucks. These are people that we're going to play up, pay up for. Leonard Fournette, AJ Green to absolutely roast the Colts. They have nobody that can check that dude. Um, same thing with Michael Thomas for seventy eight hundred bucks. The Bucks have nobody that can check his ass. I could be completely wrong, but I honestly think the Colts secondary isn't terrible, so I would prefer the mix in. Dalton as opposed to the Dalton and AJ Green just because I know that they're they haven't been great on defense but okay let me ask you a question really quick was our our starting secondary is Gathers and Malik Hooker right Mm -hmm. who are our starting quarterback cornerbacks that I don't know okay so that was a good question fair question right yeah I'm just but I'm just saying that I've seen him play well the D, the DBs they're not good um, we have good we have good safeties but our uh, cornerbacks will get torched yeah um, in my opinion uh, Kenny Stills is a great play this week um, with Devonte Parker um, nursing that finger he's only 4700 bucks at home I love Stills I love Emmanuel Sanders at home with Case Keenum now throwing him the ball I mean think about what Case, Case Keenum did with Stefan Diggs and right Adam Thielen last year. Now he's got Demarius Thomas and uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Mm. Doesn't it sound like Emmanuel Sanders is the Adam Thielen guy? Right. It does to me, and he's only five thousand um, bucks. We're paying up for Nuke uh, DeAndre Hopkins on the road. Um, we like Stefan Diggs at home with Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to him. He's only sixty three hundred bucks. And San Francisco secondary last year had like four of the worst rated cornerbacks on the team, and the only improvement they made was Richard Sherman and he's just he's not fast anymore I think that uh, you know Marquise Goodwin has been burning him and yes Marquise Goodwin is Olympic track fast <laughs> but I think that Stefan Diggs roasts uh, Richard Sherman this week
week. Um, also, John Ross for a flyer against the Colts. He's really, really, really cheap, and they like that guy this year. Um, the Blake Bortles guys with uh, Marquise Lee going down for uh, a season-ending injury. You've got Keelan Cole and D.D. Westbrook, both really cheap. Um, Tyreek Hill is a good play this week. Juju, only $5,900. Um, you know I'm going to play Juju. You know I'm going to play Alvin Kamara. Yep. Um, so I love Alvin Kamara. And now that there are only two running backs active on that roster, and it's him and Mike Gillisley. You're hammering the Kamara. And and we've talked about takes that, you know, I'm probably wrong on, uh, Naeem Hines. <laughs> <laughs> and takes that I'm probably right on, Ronald Jones. I mean, yeah. like, no one in the industry had Ronald Jones ranked as low as I did. Right. And now, they have all now caught up because he's got about 20 carries for 16 yards in the preseason. So, like we say, we'll we'll relish in our wins, but we'll also acknowledge our losses. And, the, and people keep just saying Alvin Kamara is just not that's not going to keep happening mm. and I just laugh all the way to the bank of course <laughs> it's going to keep happening these people obviously haven't watched him play right. he, he runs through you he'll do pirouettes he'll jump over you and your leave family completely over I mean he is he'll jump over you to get a parking space <laughs> at, at, at Kroger <laughs> you know like this dude like he he does not play around and now that he's one of two active running backs I think he's going to absolutely feast this week I like pairing him with the New Orleans D. Um, I like uh, Christian McCaffrey this week against uh, Didn't Dallas. Didn't really hear much about him at all last year. Um, he had a quiet, very good year, yeah. like 80 some catches. Yeah. Um, Great pedigree. I don't know if you realize he was. I didn't see him a whole lot on the uh, highlights. I know he's. uh, He did really, really good, man. I mean, his yards per carry wasn't that good. It was like three point nine. So he excelled in the passing game, but he has put on like eight or ten pounds. Yeah, they want to give him the ball. That um, Norv Turner wants to feature him, and Norv Turner said, "I want to get him twenty five touches," and everybody laughed. Mm -hmm. But then in the preseason, like there were drives where he was out there for every single snap yeah. of the first team offense. And, and uh, um, um, who's the other guy that they got uh, Anderson, CJ Anderson yeah. from uh, wasn't out there at all. So I think they're going to feature him. He's bulked up um, great pedigree. He was Ed, Ed, Ed McCaffrey's uh, son. Um, but I think Christian's going to have a great year. He's only 6,400 bucks this week. Like we said earlier, Alex Collins is a great play at home versus Buffalo. Um, probably going to be throwing lots of James Connor in there for defenses. We like, um, the Ravens, obviously, the Saints as the second play that are priced right under them. Um, priced right under them is the Vikings at home versus the San Francisco 49ers. That's going to be a great play. Taking some flyers on probably the Steelers at Cleveland is probably good for their price. Um, the Broncos at home against Seattle, I like uh, to play in a couple lineups. And the Bengals at the Colts, just because. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a homer when it comes to fantasy football. Right. I, I, I like to do what I think is going to happen. And, and you know, if, if I bet heavily on the Bengals and DraftKings and the Colts smash them, then I'm happy as a fan. Right. But I'm also smart, and I think it's going to be kind of ugly. Yeah. I'm not saying the Bengals are like the 84 Bears or anything, but I don't think we're ready for football right, right. now. I agree. So that's, I mean, we've kind of ran through all of it. I know we have some other stuff, but I think we're getting ready to hit our uh, hour and hour and a half time. So that's per- hey, that's good we're, for me, we're man. We're perfect. We're perfect. We've rolled it out. We've An hour and a half is good for me. And, the last one went three hours. Exactly. And my, everybody, even my family was like, Jesus, Paul, come on. <laughs> and we've got it perfect. Like we kind of did it, did exactly what we needed to do. We talked about what we needed to talk about. People joined in on the Facebook Live, commented, got involved. I mean, we've got a lot going going on here and uh, I can't wait to see where the rest of it takes us because it's it's exciting man football's back and I'm just pumped for it football's back baby thanks for listening in tell your friends we want to get a ton of listeners here we're going to have a great season um, uh, tell these guys how they can ask uh, questions do you want them to call so, your voicemail do you want them to email you um, guys if you have questions start sit questions uh, somebody offered me a trade I've got a couple days to figure it out what do you think about this trade like uh, let me know and and we will answer it uh, Wednesdays on the podcast. DMs are always open on Twitter, which is Juice eighty or Juice 
in the AM. Um, or poly sleepers. Poly sleepers. And then also uh, juice in the morning at gmail.com. You can email me. We also have the Google Voice phone number. So if you want to hear your voice actually on the podcast, you can call the number. It is 317 762 5823. Once again, 317 762 5823. And you can call and leave a voicemail. Um, I may answer by accident if I don't recognize the number. That's just a possibility. So, Who is it? Who is so it? basically, I'll just tell you, hey, hold on, just hang up and call back and ask your question. Um, but yeah, I think this is uh, an exciting season we got coming up. I'm going to beat the pants off of the Married with Children podcast, Dustin Roller, just to let you know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna if I am if I am projected to score more, I'm gonna beat you. All right, man, you get the win this week. I'm gonna beat Titus this week. Yeah, Polly's Creepers is going down. Yep, and uh, and also um, put him to sleep. Also, I picked up James Conner in our league. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and when we were talking, I actually dropped uh, some player and picked up the Steelers defense because I wasn't gonna play. I wasn't gonna play the. Uh, the Texans defense against the Patriots. Yeah, that was that was going to be a bad, bad play. So good pickup. So uh, yeah, thanks for listening this week. Um, great to have Joe uh, Joey Bag of Donuts on. I thought that was a great interview. And uh, guys, we'll see you next week. Boom. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for listening. Jump in the morning.